Do you guys come in and out of Penn Station often? I do. I commute from New Jersey. Does it affect you psychologically when you see homeless people in and out of this area? Sure. Yeah, I, I think as a human being, you can't help but see that and feel something. I see the upswing. I see a lot more people basically living here. Living here? In the stairwells, in the back areas. When you're here and you see homeless people in Penn Station, how do you react? It's kind of heartbreaking to see other people who don't have houses and don't have money to buy food, and it's a possibility that they could die from that. In Penn Station, you're not allowed to loiter, sleep on the floor, or panhandle. These violations should get you either kicked out, fined, or thrown in jail. Technically, you're not allowed to loiter and panhandle. Right. Are they enforcing that? I don't think so. I really don't see them moving them anywhere. You, you just saw cops walk by and they didn't talk to him. They don't talk to any other guys. You live here. Do you sleep here too? Yes. Are you allowed to sleep here? Yes. What are you doing here at Penn Station today? Nothing much. Picking up cans and bottles. How much can you make off recycled cans and bottles? Ah, uh, you make twenty dollars a day. And I survive off of uh, tips that people give me. Do the authorities here allow you to sleep here? They let you sleep up until a certain um, time. Do the authorities ever give you a hard time? No, they don't bother me. No. I don't bother nobody. How long have you been homeless? Oh, it's been like since 2005. You don't have any health insurance? Oh, sure. They give you that when you get on welfare. How'd you wind up in this situation? Drugs. What kind of drugs? Crack. How do you make money? Prostitution. How do you make money to get by? Oh, I have a pretty good stipend from the federal government. Do you have any addictions? Uh, drink. Drink? Yeah. What's your favorite drink? Uh, beer. How many times have they asked you to leave Penn Station? A couple. Do you think you need help with your drinking? No. Do you have rum in your pocket right there? Yes, I have a card in my pocket right now. You know what the purpose of that segment was. You know it. You know it. Even if you're an ultra-conservative, you know it. The whole purpose is to berate these people and to point at them and say, ah, freak shows, look at them, look at what they're doing. And also, the segment goes on, by the way, and he continues to talk to, there's one, like, older white woman he talks to, and he's like, do you feel safe here? She's like, oh, no, one time one of them jumped me. I was just going to work, but they jumped me. It's not like they're working, they got all the free time in the world, and the black guy jumped me, and I'm not, did I say anything overtly racist? Did I say anything overtly anti-poor? No, I'm just telling a personal story about how I, the good white person, went to work and I f have to walk through these disgusting areas every day where there's homeless people and poor people around me. Oh, how dare they be in my presence and be in my sight. You know that's the implication of the segment. Even if, you know, you are somebody who loves Fox News and you're a far right winger, you know that that was the purpose of that segment. And these, this is this whole segment this is coming from the people who say they love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. He cared so much about the poor, the sick, the downtrodden, people who were left back by society, and he wanted to help them. Is that what this Fox News segment was about? Is that what they wanted to do? Bill O'Reilly and his, uh, his buddy Jesse Waters here. Is that what the purpose was? You know, Bill, I feel really, I have a lot of compassion for these people. I, I want to give them a second chance, and I want to help them out, and I'm... I want to have a, a, a facility they can go to to get treatment if they need it and all this stuff. Is that what the point was? You know that's not what the point was. That absolutely was not the point. Notice, who made the most sense in that entire segment? Did you catch it? There's a, a really young little black girl who basically, basically said all the things that normal human beings would say. Com normal, decent, compassionate human beings would say. Like, you know, it's really heartbreaking to see homeless people and to think like they might they might not even have enough food to eat they might starve I like it, it hurts me when I see that everybody else was like you know it's been it's less clean in here now under this administration you know they should clean this up shoo out these homeless people they treat them like they're fucking dogs is what it is that's the sense that you get and it's this sense of unearned superiority that a lot of people have again the clip goes on man and you see it clearly as the clip goes on where people feel like, 
you know, ooh, why don't they just get their shit together? Right, because life is that simple. You don't know their personal stories. You have no clue what went on in their background, which led to the point where they're at right there. You don't know. And you notice how, they, oh, they made sure to put in those parts where they're like, I get some help from the government. And what's the, what are they trying to make the Fox News viewers do? Oh, the leechers, moochers, parasites, look at what they're doing. Get their shit together, man. That's what they need to do. What, I mean, look, what the fuck is the alternative? Seriously, remember when he's at, like, oh, do you, do you have health care? And the woman's like, well, yeah, I get it through the federal government. Like, okay, Jess, so the implication is, oh, that's bad. So, uh, well, what the fuck do you want them to do? What do you want them to do? Just take away their health care, and if they get in trouble, if they go to the emergency room, say, sayonara, bitch, get out of here, we don't want to help you because you're poor and you're homeless and you look icky. Is that what you want to do? Is that the kind of society you want to live in? Well, if that is the kind of society you want to live in, then shut the fuck up about Jesus when every two seconds you try to shove him down our throats in the political sphere. They can't, they're, they're, they're hypocrites. They contradict themselves left and right, or left and right. And look, they're just, I said it before, I'll say it again. A lot of the hosts, a lot of the people on Fox News, they're just not good people. They're just not compassionate. They don't give a shit about anybody else. It's all about them. And Bill O'Reilly had the nerve later on in the segment to say, you know, there's a true, clear violation here. They're violating the, the like quality of life laws or something. That's what he refers to it as. And it, it struck me when he said that, like, oh, you know who, what he's referring to, right? He's not saying, look, this is a disgrace. The, the, look at the terrible quality of life these homeless people have. I feel bad for them. Let's try to fix this. Let's set up a government program. Let's attack this issue, the core of this issue, the root of the problem. No, when he mentioned quality of life laws, you know what he's referring to? All the, the white people in the suits and ties who are going back and forth to work. And he's, he's concerned about their quality of life. That Oh, they have to see the low lives around them as they walk to their cushy six-figure job. Ooh, I, I feel so bad for them. How can they live through that? So that's where his compassion is. His compassion is with those people, not with the homeless people. Not with the people who are really, really going through some shit, as you can see. The people who need your compassion, not with them. No, it's with the white people who have to see them as they go back and forth to their nice job and their upper, upper middle class houses with every amenity and comfort in the world. Fuck you, Bill O'Reilly. Fuck you, Jesse Waters.